Hey, what's up? My name's Michael Luetto, and welcome to 300 Acre Studios. Over the past decade of playing and recording guitars, I've noticed a trend with myself and the guitar sounds I get before I hit my DAW. When I'm tracking, they sound amazing, but once I get them into my DAW, I start to hear a host of things I then have to do to get them to stick in the mix better, i.e. compression, EQ, saturation, etc. Not deal breakers, but I just got fed up of recording and then automatically adding a bunch of plugins. So back in 2021, I spent two days going through my guitar and bass sounds and perfecting a hardware chain so that from that point onwards, whatever I recorded would be 95% done, and all I need to do is add a high pass filter and effects if needed. For today's video, I'm going to focus on the five units that I use and show you what each unit brings and how they stack to get that final sound. First, let's listen to the guitars and bass dry with some drums. First in the chain is Cranbourne's Camden Mojo Pre. Very well priced and the perfect pre for me because of that mojo function. If I'm recording the bridge pickups, I almost always have the mojo on thumb dialed in around 75%. It adds a really nice low end weight. If I'm recording in middle or neck pickup, I'll turn the mojo to cream at around 75%. It starts to roll off the low end, which is perfect for me for sitting the guitars in the mix. Let's have a listen. Second in the chain is the newly released HRK channel strip, the CS566. Now for the guitars and bass, I'm only using the Solid State Drive at around 75%. Let's have a listen. Third in the chain is the R&D 542 tape emulator. Now I'm lucky as I have two options for hardware tape emulators, this one in the HRK ST552. After loads of testing, I've come to the conclusion that I have a slight preference for the R&D 542s when it comes to guitars and bass, whereas the ST 552s I prefer on vocals and drums. When tracking, I'll use Silk Blue when I want them to be more in the background, whereas if I want the guitar or bass to have a more presence, then Silk Red does the job. Let's have a listen. Fourth in the chain is the West Audio Dione. Like the R&D 542, this is where you can really start to hear the different units stack and solidify the sound. I remember noticing a huge shift after using a compressor whilst tracking. Everything just started to find uh, its place in the mix, which made producing and mixing much easier. Let's have a listen. Last in the chain is my most prized possession, my API 5500. I love this EQ a lot. I spent a lot of time going back and forth with this EQ regarding what to boost and cut. For guitars, I'm boosting 4dB at 200 and a 2dB cut at 240. I then cut 2dB at 3k and boost 4dB at 2.5. There's just a magic to it. Let's have a listen.
thank you so much if you've made it this far. I really, genuinely, really appreciate it. We're we're starting something new, and we're still kind of working out all the kinks, so thank you so much for that. Now, if you want to listen to any of these files without the YouTube compression on your own, be able to A, B, and go between them much faster, there is a link in the description to a Dropbox folder. Um, and lastly, just want to say a huge, massive thanks to our sponsors, who, without them, this channel would not exist. Um, so that's HRK, that's Singular Audio, that's Necotronics, and that's PMFC, the Produce, Mix, Fix, and Conquer group on Facebook. And lastly, if you're a hardware developer, if you want to book the studio out, if you've got some mix or production work you need doing, please contact me at mike at 300acrestudios.com and we will get the ball rolling. Thank you and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!